Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. In today's video we are just going to take a quick little look at something regarding Laplace transforms. So when dealing with Laplace transforms we always have to care about the convergence of this whole thing. Okay, so and when talking about the convergence I'm saying that for this constant s, this complex number s, we only really care about the real part of s, for example being greater than a or being greater than zero. So I just want to clarify why we only take a look at the real part of s. Okay, so let's take a look at the simplest example, the Laplace transform of 1. So, as always, let's just calculate this really quick. So the Laplace transform of 1 is just the improper integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times 1, so that's just e to the minus st dt. And then we are integrating this, so this is just um, 1 over minus s times e to the minus st from 0 to infinity. And now we are applying the limits to this function, so this is 1 over minus s times the limit as t approaches infinity of e to the minus st minus, and minus and minus becomes positive, so plus 1 over s times e to the 0. So we know the solution to this, it's 1 over s, under the condition that the real part of s is greater than 0 in this case, because we want the negative exponent right here. So why do we just care about the real part of s? Remember, it's all about complex numbers in this case. So we are taking a look at this part right here. And we are going to say, since s is element of the complex numbers, we can write s in a different way. That means that s is equal to some complex number a plus i times b. And now we can plug this into here. So let's take a look at this limit. Now we end up with 1 over minus s, I'm leaving this s as it is, times the limit, as t approaches infinity of e to the minus, and now t times a plus i b. And here's the point. We can now distribute this t into here, into this complex number, and then we can split this exponential function apart. So this is equal to 1 over minus s times the limit as t approaches infinity, of e to the minus t times a times e to the minus t times ib. And now you will see where I'm going at. So this right here, this a, is the real part of the complex number. So this a right here is the real part of s. So if we let t approach infinity right here, then that would mean this real part if it's greater than zero in this case, that would become e to the minus infinity. And that's 1 over infinity and this is zero, so that would be nice. But if you plug t approaches infinity into here, so this is e to the minus infinity times i times b. But the problem here is, this is Euler's formula right here. So we can represent this one right here as, um, this is just the cosine of t times b minus i times the sine of t times b. And when we let t approach infinity on this function right here, th this won't approach anything. So in order for this to converge and for all the other examples we are talking about, we just have to take a look at the real part to make this converge. So I just want to make this clear if any one of you ever wondered about that. Up until the next video, have a flammable day and yeah, see ya.